Hello there, what's going on? What's going on? Two years ago, we went to Japan. Yeah, Both we, of us. Yeah, we were supposed to go to Japan and film a documentary on uh, this car. <laughs> the low brain, low brain S S13. The idea was the car was getting shipped to Japan and uh, we were gonna tag along. This guy who owns it, Julian Barnes, he was sending the car to Japan to compete in King of Asia Drift Series. Luke Fink was supposed to drive. I was going to make a documentary, so the car was going to like show up in Tokyo, and then we were going to go to Ibisu and Nikko. So it was this road trip where we go to Japan for two weeks and kind of travel around and go to these drift events and try and cram stuff in between. I was just there for the crack. Yeah, the, the car never really showed up. There was kind of complications and whatever, and um, so it didn't work out. So basically, we were in Japan then. We were in Japan. Day. We just kept making videos on Snapchat and on the camera and stuff, and we shot loads of photos. And it was right before we started the vlogs. So I've been sitting on this footage for about like two years, two and a half years. Didn't really know what to do with it. So we decided that we would gather all the footage together and try and make some sort of a... Video. Some sort of a mini documentary video kind of thing with Juice the hands. Juice box in Japan. Juice box in Japan. We were very, very hyperactive. When you've obsessed about a place like this for so long and uh, you're finally going there, we were like children. So we yeah. flew into Osaka and uh, uh, we yeah. We got the Shinkansen bullet train. We bought a, a Nissan El Grand. Yeah, Julian bought Julian, Nissan El Grand. Yeah, bought this people carrier, Nissan El Grand, off of Yahoo Auctions. Come here to me now, acting the fucking. We got pretty excited, we got drunk the first night. I'm eating fucking octopus. octopus. Oh. Hey! Hey, go on. Ah! <laughs> fucking hell, boy. Oh. For Japanese fart. Ah! How are you getting on? You moved your chair. Yeah. We woke yeah. up fresh the next morning. So we wanted to go to Endless, who tune GTRs, and we were going to go to Impulse, who build A86s. We're driving on the road and then fucking bang. Yeah. On wow. the left, on the side of the road was just a shitload of GTRs. Uh, yeah, this shop we just came across is like, shit, stop, go back, yeah, go yeah. back. And it was a shop called APM. And I guess they specialize in GTRs. Yeah, it was a man probably just, in his 60s and I yeah. guess it seemed like he owned Some random old man just tinkering away on a 34 GTR. Our first taste, I'll never forget it because it was like, it was like losing your virginity. <laughs> yeah. Then we went to Endless, amazing. Another place that does GTRs, drag shop from back in the 90s. We went to Impulse. Impulse. Yeah. So after Ruben got his taste of Skyline stuff, I went to, I wanted to go to Impulse. So Impulse is an A86 only garage just outside of Osaka again. And they have some of the best 86 stuff in the world. Next place that we went to, which will forever be the uh, most insane. Oh. Fuck. So as long as I know Ruben, he has obsessed about this place called Global Auto. They sell the best of the best of Japanese yeah, cars. They used to specialize in GTRs only. Fucking Global Auto, boy. All right, isn't it? Yeah. Global Auto is literally just this small shop on the side of the road. All right. Well, we're down there, Ruben. Just, we were. It was definitely one of the best moments of my Of own ever, life. of our lives, ever. Just I knew that at the time. That's when I knew I liked cars. I actually love cars. Love cars so <gasps> much. 
we were trying to take in so much Japanese J JDM, Japan, JDM. That was enough for one day, really. So the next morning we got up and uh, the plan was, we were talking about it for a long time. We wanted to go to Up Garage and pimp the El Grand. <laughs> We got some work Euroline yeah, rims Euroline's with like 10 year old tires and, and a front splitter. And the idea was to just pimp the L Grand and pimp your ride in Japan and then just drive it around. They put the Eurolines on yeah. and they wouldn't fit. They were sticking out past the guard. But we're in Japan, everything's crazy. And they were like, I think the wheel yeah. sticks out one millimeter. If it's, from not, the, if it's not perfect. What? So they would. They took the wheels back off, put the standard wheels back on and said no. They hunted us out of the uh, their like little garage and then we fit the wheels. Yeah, they gave us all the tools and they were like, why are these foreigners doing this here? But, How loose are they? Nice, just been driving down the motorway with that. Safety first, Ruben. Good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can't be too careful. Looking sharp, boy. Holding the can. Real good. Nice. Is it? Yeah. What's it taste like? This. We put on the wheels, then um, yeah, it was very like pimp my ride. Welcome to Up Garage. We got all the motherfucking wheels up in this shit, son. We got the car and we put these new 19 inch Eurolands on it at the Up Garage. We didn't like the original front, so we got this Toberone edge finish right here. We clipped the right on with some screw. Now we got this whole rig kitted out with the 19. This guy got the cut off just right here, sliced the ring, spaced around real nice. The thing about Up Garage is it's kind of like a meeting place for people with cars. As we were there, a GTR rolled in that was completely, just completely factory. Restored, like, oh my god, man, it's um, 16,000 Just these random people kept showing up, like, and an old guy in a GTR, you could hear cars kind of cruising yeah. past. So we hit the road. Asahi? Fuck's sake. We're just We got to Nagoya. We got up that morning then and we went to Kids Heart, which is gone now. They were famous for putting the Sylvia front on a 180SX. It's kind of decrepit. You could that tell that it was winding down. Starting like, yeah. to shut down and now it, it's gone. Like, and yeah. that was only two years ago. And then Garage Defend was absolutely incredible. Yeah, I don't know, like... It was like being in some kind of video game. Yeah, it was surreal. And then we needed to hit the road because we were doing the long drive. Right. Nagoya to Ibisu, all the way up past Tokyo. The scenery was beautiful. Yeah. No one oh, tells you actually... about the scenery. It's got the fucking greatest scenery. Yeah, all the mountains are just huge. Yeah.
So Fukushima City is outside of the exclusion zone, which is called the Fukushima Prefecture. And then the Daiichi plant is called the Fukushima plant. So it's yeah. kind of confusing. For some reason, I guess the exclusion zone is like 30 kilometers or whatever. And then people just live normal lives around it. Abisu is in the Fukushima Prefecture. So it's all in Fukushima. So when Fukushima. we told people we were going to Fukushima, they were like, what no, no, the no, 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 fuck no. are you doing? Ah. Pudge, 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 pudge. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I'm happy. <laughs> well, are you gonna talk like this for a little while, or? Yeah, just too feel, distracting. This is how I was, well, minus the hoodie, this is how I was dressed Sorry. in Japan for a couple of days. I just feel more like I'm in yeah. Japan now, so the story will flow a bit better. So we ended up driving around Fukushima City for hours, yeah. and we went to a lot of hotels that were like, seemed that they have lots of rooms, but when they seen like, Guys foreign guys coming in yeah and you had a camera and stuff yeah, yeah. we assumed that they thought we were some kind of nuclear tourist but we just got a weird vibe in fukushima so we ended up everything bad that happened in japan ended up into a great a situation. great situation so we didn't get anywhere to stay in Fukushima and we were super fucking tired. I was really tired. pissed off because yeah. I was after driving for probably 10 hours that day. So we found a car park, um, which we... Back out the motorway. So we drove back out the motorway. The craziest, like predominantly, I just remember the 180s that were there yeah. that were just like fucking amazing. We rolled in and they were just having an old nighttime meeting. We had um, Google Translate and you can speak into Google Translate. And the translation wasn't really coming across great, but uh, it was hilarious. Eventually we popped the question. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> we were pretty hungry to see some activity. Then they just disappeared. Yeah, they disappeared and about 10 minutes later, then they came back and... With a chase They like came a back Subaru. with a, like a Subaru, their friend, and he goes, get in. Yeah. And it was just a train of five or six Jap style like drift cars just it was like we were pinching each other like yeah i actually pinched myself and this all happened again because something shit happened yeah. <laughs> oh. They, they had this little lay-by at the top and all the cars drove in and they all lined up. Yeah, I'm... And they had all their stuff and they took out their jacks to swap tires and they got everything ready up against the fence. They go down to the bottom and line up and they drift back up to the top. very fortunate to meet these young guys like yeah. there is no one really like that anymore in Japan it seems they were a little team and they call themselves crazy street yeah style. crazy street style CSS and they were nervous like the first night they brought their friend he's in this little red 180 and he wanted to show off for us yeah. but he wasn't getting his drifting properly and he was he was getting really angry and stressed yeah. because he was so nervous he thought because I had the camera and I told him we were making a little video he was fucking really yeah, nervous yeah. he was trying to impress us yeah and yeah he was yeah under pressure and the camera and he was spinning out and he was getting so frustrated yeah. and i remember just saying to him it's okay just calm down yeah. <laughs> I 
And then we all gathered and got like a photo of all of us yeah. together, just on this mountain in Fukushima. And, and it was, was just coming up in the background. We got a slice of what it must have been like to see all these guys that we idolize, what they'd yeah. done when they were younger. They had their little team, all these famous teams that everybody in America and like even here or whatever tried to replicate now. This was how it started. This was it. And we, we were getting to they see doing, that. They were doing the same thing. They were doing the same thing. Organic. Yeah. CSS. 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 Yeah. <laughs> That's where it began. It began in the hill. All this 90s toge stuff that we all obsess over. We, we got a taste of that and it was, yeah. I don't know. To this day, I still get goosebumps. <laughs> that morning, we rolled down through uh, Fukushima City with the sun coming up yeah. and we were just goofing around, racing each other. <laughs> it drove us the whole way back to the car park where we were supposed to get some sleep. Like that guy's 180 was super <laughs> sketchy. That was just an incredible experience. And yeah. we asked those guys then to come to a Bisu because we still had to go to drift and we actually were supposed to go to a drift event right after this. A couple of hours so later. So a couple of hours later we were at a Bisu. <laughs> But eventually we kind of got bored because we were up all night drifting and we went to check out the, the rest of Ibisu, like they have the graveyard. We met Alexi. Alexi, I, he, the guys, the young kids that we met that night, they showed up to the drift event. Alexi kind of acted as a, a translator between the Japanese kids and us, so we could finally actually speak to each other properly. Yeah. Like for like, thank you, Alexi, if you ever see this, uh. that was pretty cool. <laughs> and we couldn't believe that nobody was really there yeah, no to watch cares. any of the drift, and no one really gave a shit. Like Daigo was there. <laughs> Fucking Naka Nakamura. Naka Naka Naka. And no one really gave a shit. We were like some of the only spectators. The S Sardine that we were there to make a video of didn't show up. There was a bit of trouble with Yeah, there was a bit of trouble with customs and uh, the car didn't show up for Bisu. So Luke Fink, he had a missile JZX90. Yeah. As soon as he got knocked out, he yeah. came and found us and he's like... He was like, right lads, let's go yeah. and... <laughs> He's a great driver, he knows the Toge course inside out and, and North course. North course. <laughs> That night then we got back to, we got a hotel then in a Niumatsu. So and I then, was sitting there drinking a can, relaxing, just kind of tired, just trying to take everything in. Next thing I was like, yep, that's definitely an RB that I hear. And it was actually those guys trying to find where we were staying. They didn't have a clue where we were staying. And I was just sitting there in the lobby, a big window. Next thing this skyline just drove past. So I was like, no yeah. fucking shit. We didn't even shit. have these guys' phone numbers. We just arranged to meet each other in the evening. Someone asked the question kind of, where is our lift to the mountain drifting again? And they were like, there is no lift. This is your lift. Yeah. And we were like, we done the maths and went, there's five of us. Yeah, there's, what are we going to do? There's uh, two wheels in the back of the car. And then we proceeded to, one of them was like, I'll hop in the boot. Yeah, one guy just decided he was going to get in the boot of the car. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be back. <laughs> okay. Short neck cut, short neck cut. Short neck cut, short neck cut. I'll be back. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yo. Tell me the day. Okay. okay. I'll be back. I'll see you. See you. <laughs> The 
drive was about an hour. And we had to get in the back of the Skylar yeah, and sit into which, these wheels. It's a pretty small car in the back. No seatbelts. Two 18s up, and we were just sitting like this. <laughs> <laughs> and then the guy started <laughs> drifting junctions, yeah. drifting his way through the city with his friends screaming in the back of the and car. And it was just like, you hear him just going poof, yeah. poof, in the boot, just bouncing off everything. <laughs> Just like the shit that this we is do like what home. we do, yeah. Like these guys were just like us, they're goofy, immature. The guy showed up. The guy in the red car from the night before that wasn't uh, wasn't really getting it the night before. He was here. This time he was back to show us yeah. what he could do. And he got his head in the right place. Yeah. And his zen was correct. Everything was just on point. Yeah. <laughs> My camera was a bit shaky. I was trying to film, like, I, I didn't really go prepared for this, so, like, the footage is fucking all over the place. The guy got in the boot of his friend's S14. The NA14. The NA14. He was just waving the fucking wand and he nearly fell out of the back of the car. It was the craziest shit ever. <laughs> This footage doesn't even do it justice. These guys were just having so much fun and they probably do this shit all the time. It was like we were back in a YouTube video from like from the 90s like yeah. Ago. We were getting to experience this shit in real life with young guys completely by chance. Just by chance, just because we couldn't stay in a hotel. That drifting is the purest form of drifting that we're ever going to see like yeah, it's everything. It's, it's existed in Japan for probably since years, like the like, 80s. Very fortunate we had so much fun with those guys. So they they're two nights, two of the best nights of two our lives. Two of the best nights of our life. So we got up the next morning. There was some weird shit. We saw like a, is it a Hakasuka? Hakosuka that looked abandoned. It wasn't abandoned, but something weird about it. it Maybe it was from the it. exclusion zone. We don't know, but it had a blue tarp over it. This S13 was supposed to be at Nico. So we were hoping that the car would be out for the event. So the only thing is the car actually did get to Japan. Yeah, the car was actually stuck in the docks in, in the port. No, we at this point were just there to have this holiday. Oh shit, that's the car. And we were going to go to N-Style. The N-Style K is... That is probably my favorite car in the world. It tells you a story and makes you want to dance. Steve Fox examines an overnight phenomenon. Rapping to the beat. <laughs> right. yeah. We get to N-Style and it's literally surrounded by rice fields. It's yeah. in the middle of nowhere. They were amazed that we had come that far yeah. to, to come and check them out and 
And the guy who owns End Style Hyde, he's like, um, he was super cool, he showed us around. The funny thing was then when he brought over his 34 GTR with Nismo wings yeah. and stuff on it, he was just like kicking it. He was and, kicking his GTR. And then we, he, we asked him what's his favorite car and he has every car you could ever want. And he pointed at his little K70 yeah. with the 16 valve and was like, this is his favorite so car. So we could he... definitely identify with him there. And we stayed in Utsunomiya that night. We got up the next morning and, we and realized, it, um, guess what's on the 7 to the 7th? <laughs> How many times have you gone around Sakuba in Forza or Gran Turismo because I'm embarrassed to say how many times I've done it. Triangles. Dorito spinning around over everything. Car park. Sexy nights. I didn't even feel like I deserved to see that because I know there's a lot of people that love RX-7s that would have absolutely just, just the fucking tug. Masturbation. Yeah. RX-7 day was insane. Yeah. It's and massive. seven is my favorite number, but I didn't know why until that day. Let's just say we left Sakuba with a very, very strong attachment new, new to the RX rotary and RX-7. And you've seen the MR2 from um, yeah. Tokyo Auto Salon. There's a load of weird abandoned stuff on the road, which I'll probably show you the photographs of here. Just everywhere. shit everywhere. We stayed off all the main roads, which is because literally... anyone that's drove around Japan realizes fairly quickly... It's the tolls are really expensive. expensive. And we saw a weird lowrider from South Central. Abandoned. A Snoop Dogg machine just chilling in the middle of the countryside, rusting away. Left there. And then what? We went to RWB. So the whole S13 documentary with the low brain car and stuff like that didn't fucking happen was gone that was out the window out the, the car was window. stuck in customs and we had just turned this into our own unplanned holiday we would have liked to have seen the car drifting over there it would have been pretty cool yeah. but it didn't stop us from having like an amazing holiday so we started driving into tokyo So the dumb thing we decided to do was drive right through the middle of Shibuya, Shibuya Square crossing because it's the Fast busiest the crossing furious. in the world. Fast and furious, yeah. buddy. And we done it twice because we we didn't time it with the people the first yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> Driving into Tokyo without any sort of plan is not a good idea. It was cool though. But it was cool. And after about six hours of trying to find a place to stay, we found this random little new hostel, hostel that seemed like it was made out of cardboard. And then we parked the van next to a brand new Nismo GTR. Oh. So then we got drunk. We got drunk again. <laughs> Do the right thing with the F and the G. <laughs> <laughs> you got that portable DVD player up in Let's go start. <laughs> when it hits you and then we were wandering the streets till about four or five in the morning drinking it police came after us on a bicycle yeah and then we ended up we kind of ran away from him because he didn't know what he wanted so we just ran around the corner into this little bar but it ended up just being this guy's house <laughs> We 
were drunk and we had a lot of fun. And then we had to like try and find like five minutes sleep to to have a full day again of yeah. activity. But that night to cheer ourselves up, we heard that there was a huge meet on in Daikoku. Yeah. If you've ever tried to get into Daikoku, it is the hardest place in the world to get into. There was a 33 Skyline. And there was an M6 and an MR2. And they were American uh, Navy soldiers we or whatever. We just thought they were, we assumed they were Japanese. And we thought they were Japanese. Guys. And then um, there was a left and a right merge. And I was like, which way will I go? And we decided to follow those guys. And then we realized, oh shit, they, they don't, don't know where they way. were going. And by the time we got back through the maze, of stuff, the cops had broken up. Yeah, but then we had to cross the bridge back again, which cost another 30 quid. And then, back and then go back across again, which cost another 30 quid. The cops just closed off Daikoku, and we could see fucking hundreds of cars. And Ruben was really, really upset I because was, um, I was so excited about this, and so was he, and we missed our opportunity to get into that car meet, which looked like it was, yeah, it was probably pretty insane. I, that was like one of the lowest points of the trip and probably ever. <laughs> you are so sad. <laughs> but guess what? That's another time when- Out of every shit situation on this trip, it gets, it gets into an amazing situation. Woo! We heard that there was another meet happening. The grapevine. Through the grapevine. Followed a couple of cars, the, the coolest cars, man. There was this meet on. So we got to this meet and we were the only foreign people there. The best cars, everything was incredible. We had a good feeling about this shit. So we followed these four or five. Right, S15 in the tunnel? Yeah, S15 and a couple of JZXs for about 15 minutes. And then they went past these oil refineries and yeah. then they all pulled in at this junction. And sure, we pulled in also. And. <laughs> There's trucks. Yeah, there was there's trucks and traffic, lights. and then the traffic would clear. It didn't matter. These guys were just fucking insane. Three cars drifting out of the junction, and the guy drifted and against them. Drifting against yeah. them. And the cops came. Cops Man. didn't. The cops just yeah, the kind cops of showed their presence yeah. and then headed off. Just the roar of these six-cylinder four-door sedans. And they were just getting in the way of trucks yeah, and stuff. Yeah, it was very and hairy. And we really, really enjoyed that. That was Except an amazing you experience. You don't see that here in live traffic. No. They really They don't really give, give a fuck, fuck, man. Everything is so conformative. Yeah, they're all in certain boxes yeah. and conform to certain things. And then this seems this to be This is their chance to express, express themselves and go wild. And, and kind of say, fuck you to It's kind all. of, yeah. It's literally Japan giving the finger to their own fucking yeah, all strict restrictions, and restrictions. I still think it's crazy that we we done so much car stuff and we still drank a lot of alcohol yeah and had a lot of fun so like hangover. nighttime was just as much fun as the daytime stuff it's yeah we just wanted to be basically awake we thought we literally said we'd sleep when we go back to ireland we were trying to get back to daikoku because daikoku is Mecca. the greatest car park on earth. It's it notorious. is the most insane place. <laughs> it's 
hard to emphasize. Like I said, it's it's just this island with a maze of bridges and stuff around you. When we got there, it was like Fast and the Furious. It was like, it was more insane. It was literally... <laughs> There was all these minivans with neons yeah. and sound systems. Yeah. And they were playing music on top of each other. Like and just, remember the woman with the baby? And there was this woman with a small baby standing next to a massive sound system. Tell me where the and it was just pounding at the small child's head. The baby didn't actually give a fuck. The baby fuck. didn't give a fuck. Complete it was complete chaos. I'd never seen anything like this. Man. You'd think one person would just play music, but everyone was trying to play music on top of each other. And then there was like just 180s, S13. Daikoku is fucking insane. Yeah. I've been to a lot of car events over the years. I have never experienced anything as cool and as... It was exactly what I wanted it to be. Like, yeah. it, like Japan is the only place I have ever been that has exceeded my expectations. I tried to photograph so much of the stuff and try to document that. And then we just stopped just to take, just to it, take in. it in. <laughs> if you're ever in Japan, yeah, Daikoku is... Absolutely on the bucket list. The shelf life on this stuff, who knows? Obviously they see these cars and boy races as anti-social behavior, so it's only going to last so long yeah. as well. The cops came, shooed us out, and we wanted yeah. to go check out Umi Hutaisoru. Umi Hataro. Umi Hataro. Umi Hataro. Basically there's this park in this PA, this car park. You go through the really famous tunnels that like Smokey and all the guys from yeah. Top Secret. When we drove through that tunnel we realised. These oh, are the shit. tunnels where they do those 300 kilometer an hour runs. It comes up out of Tokyo Bay into Umi Hataro. Yeah. Um, and this was like area. 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. And we said look, this is our last night here in Japan. Let's go and find like that Hopefully. place. And when we got there, we drove up around, remember that 32 that was there on yeah. the um, Takimoto yeah, wheels? Yeah, the Takimoto wheels. It was just like fucking... And I walked out over the edge of the car park and looked down and it was just... <laughs> The guy that owns Charge Speed was there. He had the old Charge Speed Supra. It's a car we looked at a lot Bombics. when we were younger. All these like Wangan Charge racer Speed cars 25. are there. And these are all these old guys. They were just standing around, just chatting. And they were out to do one thing. Okay, now we understand why these guys came all the way out in this tunnel at 15 kilometers. And obviously they go fast. I just thought it was so cool that they've kept all these cars because a lot of these cars are going to go. Everybody's obsessed with certain styles when it comes to J Japanese car culture and all that 90s stuff especially like around the millennium with Lamborghini doors, like the Bomex car and the Charity car. They're not really that cool anymore to a lot of people. Just so, like their iconic cars yeah. in that time and to actually see them in the flesh. They just have by the craziest chance. presence. Yeah. And the fact that they all started their engines like for 10 or 15 minutes, they were all just warming their cars up because we knew that they were just yeah. about to do, we assume, high speed run back through that time. You could hear them. <laughs>
like this stuff is not going to be around for forever for yeah. all of us like i know a lot of these cars live on in other countries america you guys have just gone into the 25 year rule for a lot of very desirable cars 32s 33s and coming. i know there's so many of you that have wanted these cars that we've had for a long time Any s15s rules. jzx 100s civic type r's these cars are going to like I don't even know if the Japanese are going to try and stop people from exporting think, a lot of this stuff. I think the Japanese people are definitely like seeing what's happening, how much stuff is drying up and getting exported, and they're definitely starting to hold on to stuff to yeah. themselves. Like. We're burning the candle at both ends because we love Japanese car culture and we love wanting to have Japanese car culture. So it's kind of like we're taken, but we still want it to exist. Yeah, like these cars are going to get so expensive over the we next. We basically need to enjoy everything we have yeah. now and for the next 10 or 15 years, because it's not, not going to be around after that, like really. No. Like, and everything's going to be super expensive. 15 years, maybe? How much longer are we going to be seeing this stuff in Japan? Like a lot of these guys that we like are all in their 40s and 50s that are still drifting at Suchi and stuff. And even all the guys that drift at Nico, like N-Style and all them, these are old guys and they've even said it themselves like a lot of the guys that are maintaining the Japanese drift culture or Japanese car culture are old guys from the 90s and 80s and the young generation just They're just not getting into it's it. It's just not getting into it. There's too many distractions. It's too expensive. And it's too to expensive as we said like they the, can't just buy a 180 or a Skyline. No, this stuff isn't brand. just disposable anymore. Car companies are not making cars anymore to suit this stuff. That thing that happened in Japan from like the early 80s to the late yeah, 90s the was just four cylinder six cylinder cars it was one of the most beautiful things to ever happen to the automotive world and yeah. japan really utilized its time when it was booming they everything about japan was affordable, just affordable sporty fun cars yeah. ever that been. whole chunk will just go down in history as one of the greatest times ever for the automotive world and it's given us so much our shed is based off of that car culture yeah. all of us met each other through through a bond for japanese japanese cars, cars. Yeah. It's weird it's brought all of us kind of together after the, after being in japan then you kind of look at everything differently yeah like, i came back from japan basically and it gave me the biggest itch in the world to go after getting an a86 i had always had an urge for it but after going to japan and seeing that there's not a crazy amount of time left for this stuff it really made me want to go and build my 86 and that kind of snowballed and started this whole thing to create the vlogs this video was never really planned this was yeah. just all the footage that was sitting on my hard drive gathered together to make this video and uh, yeah i hope you guys really enjoyed it like well it's the fucking best place in the world it's anyway. the best place in the world for car culture not just even car stuff actually the country for, is just mind-blowing yeah. anyone that hasn't been yet you have to go go to japan before it's too late maybe and appreciate some of it and hopefully you find the same kind of scenarios that we found ourselves in this was a little special i've wanted to put this together for years so i hope you enjoyed it and yeah i don't know thanks for watching thanks for watching i hope you like it